Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your June reading. I'm so sorry I lost my voice on vacation. Um, I went away for my birthday to Portugal and um, while I was in Portugal for my birthday, I was made aware of some great uh, treacheries that were being uh, enacted against me, the channel, my child, just terrible things, terrible things. Um, and I may have lost my temper a few times while finding those things out. <laughs> may have cut my tongue a little bit, may have had some blood in my mouth and said some pretty terrible things. <clears throat> so let's start. <laughs> Queen of Swords. And then we have some cards on the ground here. Knight of Swords. The moon in reverse and the ten of pentacles in reverse. So on June 3rd, Mercury will go direct. And for you, that means that great things are possible, but only if you're open to evolution, only if you're open to seeing where perhaps the dark corners are that you refuse to be, um, that you refuse to illuminate. Right? So the moon can do what the moon does, which is to shed light in areas where we are not generally comfortable with light being, areas that we would rather prefer to keep in the dark. Uh, right? The moon does imply the dark of night. And so to have a part of ourselves that we are very uncomfortable showing be even hidden from the moon means that we've developed some sort of artificial way some artifice of some kind to keep that most secret, most vulnerable, perhaps most damaged or even most reviled part of us, a secret, even from the moon. So what does that look like? That's somebody who knows that what they're doing is wrong and they don't want anyone to know, but more than knowing that it's wrong, they know that it's in some way indicative of who they are as a person and they don't want anyone to know because then they know that people would judge them for, you know, for what it implies, right? It's not just that you're, let's say, stealing from a baby. It's what it makes you as a person. So over and over again, throughout June, you will encounter things that will be a choice, right? What will this say about me where if i make this move what's the larger implication what can be in what is indicated by my behavior okay so great things are possible as long as you're open and willing to not just share parts of your life that you know perhaps don't paint you in the best light but share parts of your life knowing that you now don't want to do certain things, that you don't want to be judged that way, that you're aware that some of your behavior is indicative of something else. It's a growing experience. As long as you're able to evolve and learn from this and see where your faults are and, 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 and also be honest, you know, yeah, I am kind of keeping that a secret because I know it's a fault. Or yeah, I am kind of keeping it a secret, you know, what my background is like because I don't want whoever I'm interested in now to think that I have that in me. Whatever it is that you're keeping in the dark, whether it's out of shame, out of humiliation, or just circumstance, right? Something bad happens to you and you don't want anyone to know. Whatever it is, understand that the more togetherness that you're able to cultivate between people, the better you'll feel and the less um, focus will be put on whatever it is that you're having a hard time confronting or at least having other people see. So something that makes you super vulnerable, perhaps even something you're ashamed of or embarrassed about. And what you realize as you reach your hand out to others and want to work together with others. And even if that means you just want to communicate with one other person about this and you're letting someone into your space, you're letting a few people into your space, Understand that it's only going to make things better. It's going to take whatever right now seems like something that has to be kept in the dark and it's going to turn it into something, inshallah, that's not only just possible, but, but 
yields great rewards. Inshallah, inshallah. So there's that. Now, when it comes to romance, the too much too soon is just not the way to go, okay? So having sex too early, saying too much too soon, divulging too much, talking about the exes, too much too soon, and you're out of there. The way that new relationships get off the ground for you guys, <coughs> excuse me, in June is that it happens naturally. Neither one of you is trying to rush it. You're both being really cautious, but more than that, you're aware, you're, you're very hyper aware of what you have to offer and you're hyper aware of what you stand to gain, okay? Because if you're in a new relationship right now, the first thing that's kind of hitting you about it is how similar the input and the output is. As generous as you are by nature, right? Jupiterian nature, you're noticing that this person is just as generous in different ways. So that makes you really take pause. It makes you want to be very, very cautious. It, it makes you want to be slow because you're putting a lot of value on them and the cup that they are offering you. And you're also putting a lot of value on yourself and the cup that you will be offering. Okay. So in that way, that evolution, that mutual evolution, that's also playful. Let's not forget. Let's not like make it into something too serious. What keeps it from being too serious, what keeps it from falling over some edge is that it does know how to laugh at, at itself. It is kind of silly in its nature. It's it's new, it's, it's silly, it's young, it's, you know, it's full of promise and two people who are healed and ready to move forward um, and, and they find each other. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Now, when you're in this space, phase of feeling really good and the money starts to you know like we talked about a couple months ago the money starts to even out now there may be a slight a slight want to flex on others don't do it no matter what you want no don't do that don't do it no matter what don't do it it's a mistake making people jealous right now is a mistake and if you've been working hard on making people feel jealous your words are coming back to bite you. If you've been working hard on putting bad vibes out there towards other people, those vibes are coming for you. And that sword is upside down. That sword wants to impale someone. Okay? Now, one of the ways that you can really open up this time of year and really gain your power, remember this is Gemini season, this is your sister season, this is your axis. One of the ways that you can do this, the, one of the most simple ways that you can do this, one second, I just lost my note, damn it. One of the most simple ways that you can do this is to not make plans. Don't make plans. Just have a good time. Just go be around people to make you feel good. Don't make plans. Just, just, just cultivate that feeling. And between June 11th and the 19th, that work situation that we've been talking about for a while, it mellows out. Finances get back to normal. Inshallah, it feels good. Um, also, people seem to really be appreciating you. They seem to be like sending you little messages here and there and making sure you realize how valuable you are. And what I would say is I would strike while the iron's hot, while they're being appreciative, I would get in there and ask for whatever I want. Okay? You also notice that everything gets easier, but it's only for like a week because then Saturn goes retrograde on the 4th. Ugh. So there's delays, but, you know, financial delays, of course, but it's because... You know, Saturn wants to have a talk. You know. Uh, it's a delay. It's good times, but it's a delay. And there's no way to really talk to anyone about it because it's so much more magical than it seems. By the time you get to the end of June, there is major, major Jupiterian energy coming in. There is a lot. 
There is a lot. It's easy right now to get ahead of yourself. It's super, super easy because you're seeing the finished product. You're seeing how well you'll be able to do, and I get that. But keep this on the outside. Keep this excess on the outside and stick to the purity inside. That's one of the only ways that I know how to get through this. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, you know, laziness is a hard habit to break. When you try to break someone of that laziness habit, they're going to take it out on you. They're not ready to break that habit. They'll, they'll fight with you tooth and nail to make sure that you're the aggressor and you, you, you know, you did what you did. <laughs> yeah, but laziness is addictive. You get used to it, right? So the last thing I leave you with here in this, you know, Scrooge McDuck card really gives it away. Just because something has to be made fun, I just needed to get the words together. Just because you feel the need to walk into places and make it fun, doesn't mean it has to be at your expense. You see what I'm saying? Love you. Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to your part two, June 22. So Mercury doesn't just go direct, it goes very direct. And you realize that together all things are possible. Now that, together that togetherness only works if you are willing to let relationships go at their own pace. Whenever you start to feel yourself doing that Knight of Swords dance over there, stop, take a breath. Any point at which you feel yourself craving the spotlight. See that moon, it's turned around. It's not the right kind of attention right now, even if your intentions are totally pure and normal. You just want a little attention from the person who likes you, maybe. You know, nothing major. But somehow, because of the time that we're in, it just looks wrong, ugly, too much, gauche. So just don't. Whenever you feel the need to do something for someone's attention, stop yourself. And just think about something that you like to do for yourself and redirect that energy because really you're just wanting some time with yourself, right? You just want, you need something. But so many of us are perhaps through our childhood or perhaps through our trauma, we've been trained to look to others to fulfill our needs. Even if it's by triggering them or attacking them, very often all we're really feeling is the symptoms of self-neglect. And we've spoken about this before, so. The spotlight, if what you're looking for is affirmation, well, it's all the wrong kind of spotlight right now. So just leave it alone. And it's also the kind of, the wrong kind of spotlight, which will bring you the wrong kind of money. Something that's not sustainable, something that's too good to be true. So just, you know, just watch, just watch it. <laughs> if you let it go at its own pace, the Ace of Cups comes to you. You know, this overflowing abundance, you don't have to go looking for it. And that's very reassuring right now when it does feel like you're a magnet and all these good things are coming to you. It's a nice reassurance to know that that continues, right? So as we move into June and July, um, more of the same. 
good luck and dynamic relationships, friendships. But also look here at this hermit. If you get into the planning and look at the two of pentacles, if you get into the nitty gritty and the planning and trying to like really map it out, you're going to mess it up. It'll get you into the minutia of the thing instead of staying in the spirit of the thing. And that's the king of pentacles over there on the end. If you, let me put it this way. If you go into it thinking I need a plan and without that plan, I'm not going to be successful. You won't be as successful as you will if you actually follow your instincts and don't try to self, don't try to make yourself adhere to something so stringent. So there's a lot of go with the flow in June, right? And it's hard to do in June because for most of it, you have this very scattered uh, Gemini energy. And so it's like, you know, Sag is within its rights to say, yeah, okay, go with the flow, but which one? <laughs> Gemini are all over the place, which which flow do we go with? Go, go with the one where you know that all the good things are coming to you and that your instincts won't steer you wrong, right? Go with the one where you trust yourself the most. Now, June 11th to the 19th, it's noticeable that work gets a little bit slower, paperwork gets a little bit slower, you're not really getting through the way you want to. And then the high priestess is like, okay, yeah, so we go even more internal now. Now, if you wanna communicate, you're doing it much more through the heart, much more through your feelings, much more through you know, what we call the telepathy between hearts. And you even start to feel, as Saturn goes retrograde, this need to kind of work in this area of your life a little more and become a bit more centered in your heart and being able to really hold space in your heart for people, right? And and there's a tenderness to that that you've been, I think, nurturing for a while. And it's not a coincidence, right, that the Ace of Cups is showing up then because you've been making this room and kind of preparing this soft spot, <laughs> let's say, in your heart. Now, Saturn goes retrograde uh, on the 4th, okay? So the more you are appreciated, the easier things get. And as Saturn goes retrograde, for some reason, the appreciation for you heightens. And so people around you are able to see like a lot more value in you. And they're like, okay, yeah, actually I, I see it. You know, the Empress is starting to become more and more clear as, a, as an archetype on you. You're embodying this more and more. Now, there are delays because of Saturn retrograde, and those delays are handled, you know, however you're gonna handle them. You can take them personally, three of swords. You can, um, yeah, you can let it turn your whole mood, right? Five of pentacles and start reflecting that reality. Or you can hold fast. Um, the mistake would be the five of cups. The mistake would be to look back on what's happened and what can't be undone and be uh, morose about it. By the end of June, you have this major Jupiter energy that takes care of whatever seems slow right now anyway. So it's just a period of waiting and then you get to choose how you wanna feel in that waiting period. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> you know, again, go with the flow. Which flow? The flow that makes the most sense to you. A big part of Gemini season is realizing that Gemini just want to do what they want to do. They don't need you to do what they want to do. And it makes people like them and not like them. Um, depending on where you fall on that, you know, depending on whether you're triggered or inspired by it. And of course, you being a Sagittarius, you, you I'm sure you're inspired by it. And you do like a bit of focus. You do like a bit of, you know, where do we put the arrow? Where's the target? And if you're being given this, you know, joyful, really kind of exuberant energy of just pick your own, pick your own direction and run as fast as you can, I think that's very liberating for a Sag. And you should try it, you know, and you have all of June to give it a go. I think that on the outside, it will look like you're doing a lot all at once. You know, maybe you're like juggling like romance and work and travel and friends and beauty and you know fashion and style 
But interestingly, as all this is going on, on the outside, there is this um, death rebirth going on on the inside where you're getting really pure and really clean. Perhaps it's how your eating is getting even more extreme or perhaps it's your spiritual diet or perhaps you've realized something so profound that it's had this effect of like cleansing, especially if you're a Sag rising. So most of this is for Sag rising. Um, you should always be checking your rising sign. But because the thing is, if you're watching this as a Sag sun, there's there is a tendency here then to attach things that are really meant for the houses to um, you, which if you're not a Sag rising, the houses don't apply to you. So that's why it's important to write, uh, watch your rising. And it will give you indications of things that you just won't find in your sun sign. So the thing where I kind of like, you know, lost my train of thought in the first part of this video um, it wasn't that I lost my train of thought. I just couldn't think of the way to say it. But I I don't know how else to say it, so I'll say it again. <laughs> and hopefully I can make more sense of it. Just because you can turn something into a good time doesn't mean that you should do it at your expense. Like you shouldn't write checks that your body and your mind can't cash just because you know you can be exuberant and full of life and Jupiterian enough to get it done. That's not fair. It's not fair to anybody, especially, especially, especially not your body. Right? So get selfish about sleep. Get selfish about, you know, eating well. Get selfish about mental rest. Get selfish about people being in your ear about things. You know, things that like maybe are like slightly entertaining, but are also really draining, you know? Because I really, I do understand very clearly this like external excess and this internal purity. And you're going through it right now and I think it's teaching you a lot. And I think it's also teaching you like the proper place for things and how to handle wealth, how to handle fame, how to handle success, how to handle power. You know, June is also the month that if you're wielding power in the wrong way, is this moon, this ten of pentacles in reverse, this, you know, wanted to throw itself on the floor energy, um, the shame, the shame you can bring on yourself if you've been abusing, you know, the power that was given to you or the Jupiterian energy that you can harness um, because everything is by this, you know, this whatever you put out is what comes back. And so when the Jupiterian energy does something that is an abuse of that power, what comes back is that same power, but magnified quite some, some say by three. Um, and, and, you know, and it can topple your life, 10 of pentacles. So, it is, a, it is quite a time because it feels very much like the karmic scales are being balanced. Very much so. And so it is also a time, High Priestess, of getting, you know, like we're saying, internally pure, getting clear. Some of that will hurt. Some of that will, you know, be painful to let go of. Some of those realizations will be too harsh. Some of those facts will be all the more painful because they're irrevocable. But that does not we mean we bury our heads in the sand. That's just waiting for someone to cut it off. You know, you gotta you gotta look your demons in the face. You have to see yourself as you really are, or else you leave yourself a target for anyone and everyone because they can really see you and you can't really see you. So they will always be at an advantage. In some respect, it's foolish to talk to Sagittarians as anything except a warrior. I try my best to keep it out of our conversations. But if we're really gonna talk, do you realize how incredibly dangerous it is for you to not know who you are and for someone out there then to be able to be smarter than you because they can see what you refuse to see. 
Do you understand how that makes you a sitting target? It leaves you completely vulnerable because they have access to so much about you that you just don't know about yourself. Because being able to see it would require putting your ego to the side and seeing what's actually really going on. Because the ego never lets us see, you know that. Well, it's fighting for its own survival. It needs you to see what <laughs> it needs you to see. It's something to think about. Because if you could see yourself as you really are, good, bad, and different, whatever, you would be much, much, much more skilled at protecting yourself. That should be enough of a reason to crave and strive for clarity. You know, that should be the motivation to delve deep into introspection. Why am I doing the things I do? What is my motivation? What am I afraid of? Who hurt me? Because if you cannot answer these questions, you, you do, you do have your metaphorical head buried in the sand and your neck is very exposed to anyone and everyone and whatever they may choose to do. It's dangerous, Sagittarius, to be blind like that. It's not good strategy. So think it through and we'll talk more strategy in the extended. I'm so sorry about the May video. As you can tell, I lost my voice. There's been a lot going on. Oh my God, so much. I'm going to talk about it in the podcast. I will, yeah, I'll tell you all about it. I love you. I'll see you in the extended.